again, it's Chrissy here for part three of the reintegration brief. We're talking a little bit, we've talked about the renegotiation, so kind of like talking about how roles have changed since deployment. But now we wanna talk a little bit more about the reintegration process, okay? So this can be for family members, for children, for intimate partners, or for just reintegrating yourself back into a family unit with loved ones. Allow the service member to have a role within the home. That can be difficult for people who have had to take on a lot of responsibilities and additional responsibilities. So one of the ways that we can, the first steps that we can go through to allow for help and allow for change is to first thank service members and likewise service members should thank spouses and family members for the changes and for the sacrifices that they have made, okay? I realize that it's been very difficult to be away from the children. Um, you must have missed your son or daughter and or children very much. Um, we would like to um, let me know what part of the children's routine or what part of the household routines you would like to take part in, okay? And allow them to do it even though you might know of a better way, you might see them mess up something, allow them to do that. The best way people learn is sometimes through mistakes and they are more likely to learn something better if they have made their own decisions in the process of learning rather than someone telling them what to do, okay? We wanna make sure we allow for plenty of time to get reacquainted as a family. Um, consider, this can be difficult if you're new to an intimate partner relationship, um, consider carving out time just for the couple themselves. Um, it can be very difficult to tell parents, um, extended family members, that you might need some time to yourself as a couple, but it's very important that you allow for time by yourself after a deployment. So think too about, hey, we can't actually travel anyway right now, but we're actually, we will think about maybe making a trip in a month or so, or let's see how it looks like after, at the end of the summer. Think about these kind of ways that you can um, get time to get reacquainted with yourself, okay? Um, do not spend too much time thinking about far into the future future or things that have happened in your past during deployment, think about enjoying what's going on currently in the present in the moment. That might mean a lot of home cooked meals or enjoying takeout or trying to make the home a little bit more exciting. Um, even little tiny things like, hey, let's go eat out in the backyard today. Um, let's go have morning coffee out on the patio. Um, I made you breakfast in bed. We might have to get very creative with some of the ways we celebrate and change up if we are on a stay at home orders and we're not able to go places. Enjoy your daily walk. Um, maybe try and do that together. Just think about ways that you can change it up because all of us are kind of, kind of trying to survive a situation where we've been um, at home for quite a while. I think we're on week eight right now of stay at home orders. So it's quite a long time. Um, do not feel like this. I think this is important for really anybody in any life situation. Don't compare yourself to where someone else is at that moment. Um, we're all kind of experiencing situations where we might be affected by the pandemic differently than other people. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Compare yourself to who you are today and think about where you want to be tomorrow and think about the incremental steps you want to be to where you want to be someday. Don't get too involved in what you should have done in the past or scary things that might happen to your future. Think about where you are right now and where you want to be and how you can get yourself to that place. And that's it. Don't think about any of that other stuff. It's, it's important to remind yourself you learn from your mistakes, but dwelling and obsessing usually don't yield you the results that you want in those situations. Okay, so we'll cover a little bit more about intimate partner relationships in um, a supplement to this brief, so look for that. Okay, so the operational stress control, service members know about this, but this looks like a thermometer, green, yellow, orange, and red. I have a graphic for it on the next one. And it's just a way that our behavior and our mental functions change 
when we are experiencing levels of stress. So this is talking about operations like with regards to combat situations um, or peacetime situations, but this can also be relative to family members. So green, this is kind of looking like I'm maybe not stress-free in my life, but I have tools in my toolkit. I understand what stress looks like and I make the appropriate actions once stress comes into my life to bring myself into the ready mission prepared for service members mission prepared. But I kind of feel like I can handle the stress that comes to me. I'm treading water nicely. I, I see peaceful, calm seas even though I get a wave here and there. The yellow, you are acting reacting to normal life stressors, but might be having some either increased irritability, maybe some disruption in your sleep. Um, maybe you are noticing your eating habits change a little bit. Um, and then you have some mild symptoms here. Uh, I think almost everyone during a global pandemic is somewhere, if not in the yellow, maybe in yellow green. Although, I will say that I have heard of some people who have a very good sense of peace and calm during a pandemic, during stay-at-home orders. Those are interesting types. Um, but consider how you might be handling something and then how your family members might be handling something as well. So the next one is orange. Um, these two areas are your responsibility. So if you find yourself in yellow or orange, you need to take stress management techniques to pull yourself back into the green. And what are stress management techniques? That could be anything for anyone. So for me right now on stay at home orders, if I feel really frustrated with my child's homeschooling situation, and I've also got a call from my, my uh, superior, um, after that stressful situation, I might take everyone in the household out for a walk because getting out, looking at birds, feeling the sun on my face is a stress management technique for me. That's not the same for everybody, right? Some people might enjoy vigorous exercise for a period of time. Some people might want to just get a cup of tea, go sit outside, take some deep breaths. This is different for everyone. But if you find yourself in the yellow or orange, it's your responsibility in that time to take stress management techniques to get yourself back to here. And it might not be immediately, but finding a brief respite from the stress you are feeling in this area is useful. So orange, you're looking like you're not mission ready. Okay, again, during a pandemic, it's understandable that a lot of people might be feeling this way. They may be more stressed than, than, you, can help, um, that you, than you can help yourself with. So once you find yourself in that situation, it's a good idea to reach out to an external resource um, for help. And that might be as, as simple as calling a friend um, to help you process and verbally get out some of the feelings that you're having or it might be more serious where you need to reach out to medical therapy or, or mental health services. So you should know that yourself, but you should know that that's available for you and you should know the point at which you feel your stress is so high that you need to reach out. Because if you find yourself in the red, if you are in the red in your operational stress continuum, medical attention is required and that can only be diagnosed by a medical health professional and you actually lose functioning. You might lose, uh, have memory loss during that time. You might not be able to process um, things around you as quickly um, when you're experiencing the high level of stress. So you should be checking in with, your, in your, with yourself regularly to see where you are on this operational stress continuum model and regularly be taking stress management techniques to bring you back into the green. Okay, I'll cover this a little bit more in some of the subsequent briefs. Um, the other thing that I wanna draw attention to here is that this can be both long-term and short-term, okay? So you do see people that kind of stress, 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 blow, blow up, and then bring the, and then they're fine, they brought themselves back into the green. That's not exactly the most healthy way to deal with your stress management techniques. If you're frequently having to apologize for a behavior where you lose your temper, that's a, that's a signal that you might not be handling your stress as efficiently and as useful as you could, okay? All right, so these are some of the operational stress zones and the stress characteristics. I'm gonna hold this up for you to kind of self-identify. 
But what I would encourage you to do is reach out to us at Fleen Family because we have a self-assessment for you yourself. It's actually set up for a sailor, but it could be for an individual as well. And then we have another one that you can operationally stress um, assess your family, which is really interesting because I think that specifically when we have children going through developmental stages, we might just go through periods where there's just a lot of screaming in the house. Um, there's a lot of kids who don't have um, behavior that is looks like they are feeling well adjusted for a period of time. It's good to recognize that and then realize that it's it's a good idea to implement general overall stress management techniques for kids. So again, what works for you might be fantastic, but it might not work for your four-year-old or your 12-year-old, okay? My daughter likes to do a lot of those crafting, um, coloring things. She likes to have glue and scissors and staples and paper clips and egg crates and all that kind of stuff. That is not my cup of tea. So normally, <laughs> I find some place for her to do that with someone else who that's a little bit more in their wheelhouse and it doesn't make them like go like that, which what the, that's what makes, like, that's what I do whenever I do arts and crafts. Um, so consider too what works for your child and figure out what that is. Regularly implement that into their daily routine so they can feel a little bit more adjusted and at peace. All right, I'll be back for part four of this reintegration brief. And then I will have additional ones for children and intimate partner relationships.